creating your own presentations, videos, social content, whatever it might be, compelling graphics can be so important to telling your story. Using SparkPost and Illustrator, you'll explore tips and techniques like how to create an infographic in SparkPost and techniques for how to create a logo with your name and shapes in Illustrator. So let's start our graphics design with Adobe Spark. With Adobe Spark Post, you can easily create different types of graphics. There are tons of possible uses for students of all ages. Maybe to create an ad for a virtual event, or like you'll do today, create an infographic for a class project. You can see a final project in the form of a Spark Post here. You'll find all types of engaging Spark learning content on edX.adobe.com Spark. To jumpstart your project, you can start from one of the many templates available, or you can start from scratch. Up here in the search field, I'll type in infographic to find a starting point. Now you can choose from all of these templates. Now I need to create a graphic for class about different types of dinosaurs. You can use these types of infographics for all different kinds of class projects, from English class, maybe discussing a story timeline, to science class, like this one, which discusses facts about a planet. After clicking, you can choose to edit the template. The project is then opened and added to your project list so you can edit it later. With Post, you have a lot of options for editing your infographic. Pretty much everything out here is editable. On the right, you can edit the template and try something else, if this template doesn't suit your needs maybe. If you click on another template, the original you chose will be saved as a separate project. I'll click to close this because I like the one I chose. Now you can make other edits, like change the overall design. You can apply your own branding color, logos, and fonts that you set up in Spark. You can also choose a new design and the content will be poured into that new design. Kind of like this. I, I don't like the look of that, so I will undo. Okay, to start editing the content, you can double click on text and edit it like this. And if that doesn't work, you can always click the text and then click the pencil up here. I'll change it to dinosaurs. You can resize text by dragging a handle or even changing the formatting on the right. Then you can drag it into place. Click away from the graphic to deselect. Now we need to change the rest of the content and the colors to match what we have in mind. So first, let's change the background. Click on the stars in the background and on the right, you can see what can be done. Let's replace this image. So click Replace to pick another image. This allows us to upload an image we have or search through Creative Commons license imagery. I'll search for Dinosaur Land and choose this one. With it in place, you can modify a bunch of things. Like here, you can see opacity. I'll change that maybe. Now this graphic of a planet, we should replace it. I'm gonna replace it with a dinosaur. We can either replace it or place a new image. So click to edit it and then delete it by clicking the trash can. I just wanna show you the process of adding something new. So click the plus and you can see the types of content you can add. Click icon and search for dinosaur and then click on it to add it. Once it's out there, you can move it and resize it. Now I'd like to change the color of the icon. So the formatting options for the selected content are on the far right. Click color and click another color to apply it. Even color from branding you've saved. Now if you want to edit the color, you can click the color again to make changes. Now to make other color changes, click away somewhere to deselect. And on the right, you're gonna see the general formatting options for the entire graphic. So click colors, and you can see the colors applied to the post. If you wanna edit each color, you can click on change color and make a change, then click on the next and so on. You can also click to apply colors from your branding that you'll set up in Spark, or colors they suggest. Now you can also change the overall layout. So click on layout, and you can change it to something like, if I scroll down a little bit here, maybe multiple columns. You can see what it does. I'll undo that. If you want, the content can move as the layout changes or not, like this. Now, I'll put it back where it was. I like the original better. That border can also be removed here or made larger if you want. You can always undo things up here. 
All right, lastly, before we make changes to the content, you can allow posts to resize your layout depending on where you need to export for. This is amazing because it's gonna take your content and just resize everything to fit. Now to finish up, you can use the methods we already showed here by going to the text and editing it, dragging to move it, with it selected, clicking the trash icon to remove it. I'm gonna go through and make a few changes to put in the data I want. With the post complete, you can invite others to make edits for a collaboration maybe. You can download a desired file format and you can see them here. Or you can share it with the world by publishing directly to social media or even Google Classroom. In Adobe Illustrator, you can create whatever you imagine. For this tip, you'll see how to make a simple logo like these using text, fonts, and shapes. Now I've got a document open I created and I'll start with some text. So select the type tool in the toolbar on the left and click to add some text. Then type in your initials or name. Now the text is pretty small. So to resize it, select the selection tool in the toolbar and drag the corner. As you drag, press the shift key so it doesn't stretch it or squish it. And when it looks good, release the mouse button and then the key. Now a good logo or word mark will actually have a font that matches the company branding and look. So in the properties panel, to change the font, click the font menu, and you can choose a font you have or click find more to explore Adobe fonts. Now I want a thicker font, so you can filter based on what you want here. Find a font in the list, you might need to scroll down a bit, and then to activate it, click here to activate. Once activated, you can click show activated fonts and you should see it in the list out here. You can then click to apply it. Now to change the spacing between the letters, it looks a little tight out here. You can change the tracking here. A negative value brings them closer together and a positive pushes them away. With the text ready, you can add some more if necessary. Select the type tool again and click to add some more. I'll type creative in capitals. You can then resize the text by shift dragging, change the spacing using tracking again if you want to, and drag it in place. Now to add our shapes and learn a few key techniques. Come to the rectangle tool and press to select the ellipse tool. Come out and draw a perfect circle by pressing the shift key and dragging. When it looks good, release the mouse button and then the shift key. To move the circle into position, drag it by the center point here. All right, to change the appearance of the circle, first remove the fill by clicking fill and applying none. Then change the stroke weight so it's a little bit larger. You can change that here. And you can change the stroke color if you want here. Now the circle is covering parts of the text, so you'll remove those parts of the circle using the Shape Builder tool. First, you'll draw a rectangle to tell Illustrator what to remove from the circle. So press the ellipse tool over here in the toolbar and select the rectangle tool. Drag to create a rectangle crossing over the circle like this. Now you'll select both shapes and remove the rectangle area. So select the selection tool in the toolbar and drag just across both to select them. Then select the shape builder tool and pressing option or alt, Drag across the rectangle area to remove it. Now you can see that the circle has become two separate shapes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the line segments like this one so it looks like an open path. So with the direct selection tool selected, click away to deselect, then click on one of the line segments here. Press delete or backspace to remove it and do the same thing for the path down here. There. The last step for a logo with text could be to edit the characters in your name, to edit them like shapes, I mean. To do that, you can convert the text to shapes. So click your name or your initials and choose Type, Create Outlines. Your name is now a bunch of shapes you can edit. To edit them, select the Direct Selection tool over here in the toolbar and drag across parts of the letters. Drag one of these little anchors to reshape the path and you've got it. There are lots of things you can do to make a creative logo. 
Once you're finished, you can select the selection tool and drag across all the artwork, and we're going to export what we select. So choose File, Export Selection. You can choose a location and a format, and you've got yourself a logo you can use in your projects. Creating graphics can be done no matter what grade or experience level using different Adobe tools. As students progress through their learn journey, they can master their graphic design skills from Adobe Spark to Adobe Illustrator.